behalf of the Boxing Voice. I'm here with former world champion, Mr. Liam Smith. How's it going, Liam? Yeah, very good, very good. Absolutely. The days ahead of the way, and I'm sure it can't be that easy on you, right? I see you drinking that black coffee. We talked about it earlier. I'm sure you can't wait for it to be done with, right, and get in it, to get into the ring on Saturday. Yeah, every fight, uh, fight week just looks forward to the weigh-in. You know, once you get the weigh-in out the way, it, it becomes real then. And you can settle, you can drink, you can eat, you can... You know, my, my, my rate's good. I'm, I'm, I'm happy where I'm at, but... You know, the weigh-ins, everybody, every fight is the same, no matter what weight, no matter how comfortable they are. They just want to weigh in so they can relax. Absolutely. The fight this Saturday is against a pretty well-known opponent, uh, Jesse Vargas. He's got quite a profile here in terms of big fights in the United States. Where does a win against Jesse Vargas situate you in the junior middleweight division? Yeah, I think a, a win for myself against Jesse. He's massive. He's a former two, two-weight world champion, uh, and he's still a big name. I know he's been a bit inactive, but... He's still a huge name, so a win for Jesse puts me right back in the mix with, with the world champions for, for knocking on the doors for the challenge for a world title. The year I've had should put me back there also. I should have won out in Russia. I got the decision went against me. I beat Anthony Fowler last year, and I'll beat Jesse Vargas, and then I'm, I'm, I'm back in the mix with the big boys. Absolutely. The Fowler win was a very impressive victory. It was a you know, local battle for bragging rights, but I think it meant much more than that on the international level as well. This fight that's taking place later on, uh, uh, next month actually, between Brian Castaño and Charlo, uh, what are your thoughts on that fight, and who do you favor going into the rematch? You know, they're both top fighters. Charlo's been a top, top fighter over the years, but I think the weight is catching up with Charlo. I don't think he's got the engine at 154 that he did have. I feel Castano won the first fight, and I think Castano might just edge the second fight also. Um, but, you know, two top fighters, and, and I'd love to share it in with either one of them. Anyone else in the division that you're kind of looking at? Uh, Tim Zhu made his U.S. debut here recently. What are your thoughts on him or anybody else in the in the 154 pound weight class? There's a lot of fighters I can sit and name, but Tim Zhu is one that I've always been linked with, and I've been offered that fight. Um, there's always been talk to me fighting Tim Zhu, so that's the fight I'd love to have next if it beat Jesse, when I beat Jesse. But uh, you know, when I got offered the Tim Zhu fight, it just didn't make sense for me, as in. The fight was in seven weeks, but I had to go to Australia in for five weeks, but I had to house quarantine for two weeks while I was there. It was just too much messing around for such a huge fight. It was too, it didn't make sense for me, and I'm, I'm not in the in, 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 in the game for pussyfooting around for other people. It didn't make sense for me, so it was a no-go. Uh, it was nothing to do with Tim Zhu. I, I, I'd love that fight, and it's a fight that excites me, so Tim Zhu's a name that I'd, I, I'd, I'd want to get. Last name I want your opinion on, because I know you got to go, is uh, Sebastian Fundora, the huge, I believe he's six foot six, six foot seven. How would you fight Sebastian Fundora? Yeah, that's after obviously just, just, to be fair, I don't think I'd struggle as in getting a good fight with him because for such a big fighter, he's a better fighter than he is boxer. You know, he should be a boxer, six foot, using his range. And he's not the best at that. He's a very, very good fighter, but... I think his last fight against Lubin, Erickson Lubin, announced that he's a fighter. You know, everyone thought he's just a, a gimmick, you know, a six foot six freak in nature, but can't fight, he's just that big. I think he proved against Erickson Lubin, no, this kid can fight. So he, he's going to be in the mix also, and he's going to be he's going to be knocking on the door in the next years, next 12 months also. So that's a fight that could happen. Absolutely. There's big for his weight class, like your brother. Right, and then there's huge for his weight class like Fundora. Listen, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it, and good luck on Saturday. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. Thank you for having me. Liam Smith, Boxing Voice. Thank you. Good luck. Take care. For the video, feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the patreon.com backslash the boxing voice. We have tons of exclusive from Border Wars, Entitled, Betting Shows, the list goes on and on and on. But in addition to that, if you guys have questions for fighters, trainers, and promoters, this is where you can submit them. We will run out, get these questions answered, and put it back on the show just for you guys. Appreciate it. Peace.